Coming up on the show, midterms are approaching. If you procrastinate about when to study, at least know where to study. SMTV found some good spots for you and we'll share them with you at the top of the show. As Suicide Prevention Month comes to an end, these cranes are still soaring in the Union. Stay tuned to find out more about the display set up by Student Counseling Services. And later, SMTV coverage goes from Hattiesburg to Laurel. Why? To cover Downtown Laurel's biggest event of the year. With 229 vendors expected to be at the Loblolly Festival on Saturday, the annual event is bigger than ever. More on that later in the show. The Golden Eagles were sitting pretty in the Big Easy this weekend. It was the first time that the Golden Eagles beat the Green Wave on the road since 2010. But will the Golden Eagles stay large and in charge as they face the Troy Trojans next weekend? We'll see about that in this week's sports recap. News, sports, more begins on SMTV. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Thank you for tuning in to SMTV. I'm Jeterica Wilson. And I'm Abigail Troth. Midterms are coming up for students at the University of Southern Mississippi. It's hard to believe that we are in week six of classes and that this is our fifth episode. I know, Abigail. It's crazy. I'm just glad there's not a midterm for SMTV. <laughs> Though I should probably start studying for my classes. There are so many places to study on campus. SM2 reporter Simeon Gates did a survey of all the best study spots. Here's the story. College students know how important the perfect study space is. Let's evaluate the most popular options on Southern Mrs. campus and get some study tips from the Center of Student Success. To get an expert opinion, we reached out to Dr. Ashley Burnside, Director of USM Center for Student Success. So I think largely a lot of how efficient or effective studying is is dependent upon the environment in which a student is studying, but also what is the goal the student wants to get out of that session. Arguably, the most popular option on campus is Cook Library, which has a variety of settings and options, no matter what your study needs are. I need it to be really quiet and it's just a peaceful environment and you know there's Starbucks in there so. <laughs> right outside of the library is the courtyard. This is great for warm scenic days when you want to get outdoors. Well, on days when it's sunny it's really nice because you can sit like in the shade and you can enjoy the um, the weather and people watching is always fun <laughs> so. <laughs> then there's the Cook Union which is always great for quick stops in between classes. It's better to study in here when there's like a minimum amount of people and the sun is out because you get that rush of energy. Lastly, you can save the trip and stay in your dorm hall. It's always open, the food is free, and you don't have to stress about parking. It's comfortable and it just provides a nice zen space for me to be away from people. This is Simeon Gates reporting for SM2 News. Thanks, Simeon. And speaking of staying on top of classes, hitting the gym may be just as important as hitting the books. That's a great point, Abigail. There have been major discussions about physical activity over the last couple of years due to the coronavirus. With many people rushing to get the latest vaccine, some people have found that staying in shape can have lasting effects on sicknesses. SM2 reporter Nathan Lee shows us how important physical activity can really be. Mastering a workout plan can be hard for some, but physical activity has become an important talking point after the COVID-19 pandemic. Physical activity not only helps with a person's physical abilities, it can also positively impact a person's mental health. It has been a very important topic over the years as adults and elders look for a way to stay ahead of the youth. The grind never stops, even in a suit and tie. And one person that lives by that motto is athletic trainer Leslie Oglesby. I had a chance to sit down with him and ask him about the importance of physical activity. Countless research studies have looked at all the different countless benefits of physical activity. You can name a chronic disease and it probably helps protect against it. We're talking about stroke, heart disease, uh, obesity, cancer, uh, 
really any kind of disease you can think of, it serves as, as protection against that. And not just chronic disease, but also uh, acute disease. So when we think about uh, the immune system and how physical activity can help boost the immune system, so that it can help us uh, not get sick from the common cold, from the flu, from COVID even. Some people think that physical activity can only be done outside, which it can be by joining your local baseball team or even just hooping with your friends. Now though, there are multiple indoor options, like your local indoor pool, for you to get that heart rate up with some laps. A person who must be physically and mentally ready is YMCA lifeguard Grant Matheny. We were able to discuss why physical activity is so important for him. To me personally, it helps keep my mind clear, keeps my body in shape, and then with my job, of course you need to be in shape because you need to be ready to help others. And like I said before, keeping my mind clear, it just helps keep those thoughts good. For people that do not know where to start, it can be as simple as going for a casual bike ride or parking further away to get those extra steps. But don't forget that reward at the end of your exercise. Nathan Lee, tune in. Thanks, Nathan. Well, it's almost that exciting time of the year again, homecoming. The final homecoming election results were announced on last Thursday. After a smooth and successful campaign, the candidates were overjoyed to see that their hard work had finally paid off. The winners revealed that the road to winning was not easy, but it was all worth it in the end. Trapped in the glass ceiling, and I always felt like I was trapped in the glass ceiling, that I could always see the top, but it was always something preventing me from reaching the top. And honestly, what was preventing me from reaching the top was myself. If you are not able to see the results announced live, you can watch recordings of our results from September 20th and, 20, and 22nd on our YouTube channel. Live at 5 is back. The annual community festival is held in Town Square Park in downtown Hattiesburg. It offers music, food, and a great time for those who attend. Live at 5 will be here every Friday for the next four weeks with a special guest and live music every week. They have plenty of great food and nice knickknacks to purchase. For our business, it's bringing in, it's just a good exposure. One thing I like about Lava 5 is that it brings us into the community and really knows Chicken and Deckers is right down the street. If you are interested in being a part of the festivities, be sure to go live at 5hberg.com. There are four more festivals left in the 2022 season. About 250 frontline workers got two unexpected treats Monday afternoon. First, they were treated to an appreciation luncheon hosted by Interim President Joseph Paul at the Thad Cochran Center. Then, they heard local music sensation Chapel Heart. The country music trio of young Southern women, Mississippi women, have taken the country by storm since their appearances on, on, Amer since their appearances on, Miss on America's Got Talent. <laughs> After the concert, they dropped in for a rehearsal of USM's a cappella ensemble, Spirit of Southern, at the Manoni Performing Arts Center. Sisters Danica and Devin Hart and their cousin Tria Swindle listened to the show, then posed for pictures with the group. The concert was sponsored by Cadence Bank and the Alumni Association. As Suicide Awareness Month ends, the paper cranes in the Thad Cochran Center are as vibrant as ever. Set up by Southern Miss Student Counseling Services, the display represents an old Japanese legend. The legend says that by folding 1,000 paper cranes, one person or a group of people can have lives of peace and healing. The display will be up until the end of September. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among those ages 10 to 24 years old. For help, contact the Suicide Prevention Hotline by dialing 988. A new student organization seeks to break the stigma about addiction. Shatterproof is a national nonprofit dedicated to reversing the addiction crisis. It seeks to provide information on treatment, recovery, and addiction prevention. The chapter formed on campus this semester is the first student organization affiliated with Shatterproof in the country. The success of the student organization could determine if more are formed across the United States. I had so much support from all aspects that it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be and it went by really quickly and really smoothly and it continues to do so.
The inspiration behind this student organization actually came from an addiction counseling class Martin was in last spring. The organization's first meeting is tomorrow at 4 p.m. You can find out more on their Instagram page. Coming up next, we have a couple of big stories in our Flash News Briefing. And there is a lot of going on in USM's athletics. SM2 Sports Director Austin Lindsay has everything you need to know in this week's installment of the SMTV Sports Recap. But before then, let's take a quick look at the weather. At a time when misinformation is all too common on social media, we take great pride in bringing you the news that matters, that impacts your family, news you can trust. Local broadcast journalists bring you the facts, covering the stories breaking in our community and across the globe. Text TV to 52886. Congress know you depend on local journalism. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. It's on us to stop sexual assault to get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us. To stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Check out our newest design for our Adcock Pool & Spa website. Explore the new look and feel. Build your perfect poolscape in the comfort of your home with our in-ground pool wish list. Choose from different features including pool type, shape, depth, and exquisite style with our outdoor landscape options. With Adcock Pool & Spa, you're in control. Visit us at adcockpoolandspa.com or at any of our three locations. Adcock Pool & Spa, we are in the fun business. Visit HubCityHoedown.com to find your tour dates and live music events for all your favorite local bands. Or submit your own local event on our website. That's HubCityHoedown.com. Your live music in the Berg. There are a couple of things in and outside of Hattiesburg that you need to know about. Here is your SMTV News Flash Briefing. New evidence shows that USM alum and former NFL quarterback Brett Favre continued pressing for funds to build the volleyball arena at USM, even though he was told doing so may be against the law. At the time, his daughter played volleyball at USM. A court filing written by attorneys for former Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant released the damning information. The funds eventually used to build the volleyball arena are part of a larger pool of misspent welfare funds. According to Mississippi State Auditor Shad White, $77 million intended for the temporary assistance for needy families were misspent. Instead, that money went to fund projects desired by the politically connected in Mississippi. Earlier this month, it was announced that Favre was questioned by the FBI for his role in the largest public spending scandal in state history. Hurricane Ian ripped through Cuba on Tuesday and left millions without power. It did the same for Puerto Rico on Monday. Then, the Category 3 storm brought catastrophic winds, storm surges, and heavy rain. This evening, Hurricane Ian made landfall in Florida. FEMA reports that it hits the Sunshine State as a Category 4 hurricane. According to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, more than one million residents are currently without power. DeSantis has described the hurricane as battering southwest Florida. I'm Austin Lindsay and welcome to the SMTV Sports Recap. Over the weekend, Southern Miss football might have gained the biggest win in the Will Hall era so far, with volleyball splitting a pair of games and soccer calling a draw versus James Madison. The last time 
the green wave and the golden eagles face off against each other will hall was on the other sideline as the offensive coordinator coordinator taking down usm 66 to 24 in 2020 now coach hall leading the golden eagles gave two lane the same fate who scored 24 points also with a loss now we take it over to nathan lee at yaman stadium in new orleans louisiana A ringing herd from New Orleans to Hattiesburg. The Golden Eagles were able to defeat the Tulane Green Wave 27-24 in this classic rivalry to capture the Battle of the Bell. This is a long-awaited major victory for the Southerners program, for its players and fans in attendance, as the road to get here was not easy. Yeah, the road had no pavement on it. All right, it was gravel. All right, there was a lot of holes. All right, there were some trees knocked down in it. And uh, it's been a really, really tough road. All right. But the road's starting to get clear, and it's starting to get better. The Green Wave would start the game hot, as they would score two rushing touchdowns from Ty J Spears to give Tulane an early 14-0 lead. The offense struggled early, failing to score on their first four drives. They would finally get some momentum halfway through the second quarter with a defensive stop at Tulane's six-yard line. The Golden Eagles took advantage of great field position after the punt with a quick 23-yard passing touchdown from Zach Wilkie to Jason Brownlee. The momentum continued to flip as the Golden Eagles special teams unit would get their first block of the game on the very next drive, leading to a field goal for Southern Miss. The Golden Eagles would only find themselves down 17-10 at halftime in a game they had not executed well on offense. Southern Miss's defense stepped up big time, nearly shutting out the two-lane offense in the second half. After a two-lane missed field goal, the Golden Eagles put together their best offensive drive going 70 yards in seven plays to tie the game at 17 all. The special teams unit would show up again as they would block a field goal this time, leading to a made field goal on the next drive to give the Eagles their first lead of the game. The clean game by both teams would end on the next drive as Eric Scott would get his second pick six of the season. Eric Scott talks about what that pick six was like for him. Great effort and hustle by uh, Christian Booth to knock it up in the air. And then for Jay Stanley to lead me into the end zone, man, I was just... I was just so happy. A lot of emotions. A lot of emotions. Tulane would go on to score a late touchdown to tighten the score at 27 to 24. But Southern Miss would recover the onside kick to end the game once and for all. This has been Nathan Lee with SM2 News. On Monday, Will Hall stated that Zach Wilkie has submitted him submitting his himself as the starter at QB. Let's take a look at Wookie's stats thus far on the season in three starts. He's also led the offense to two games so far with no turnovers. The last time this has happened was in 2017 with wins over Rice and Charlotte. The Golden Eagles now have a bye week at 2-2 two two as they begin conference play at Troy on October the 8th. Golden Eagles Volleyball started conference play, splitting its series with South Alabama this weekend. Friday evening, the Golden Eagles came up short, trying to force a crucial fifth set in the fourth in extras, losing 28-26. to Saturday, Southern Miss would get its wish with a fifth set thriller as Cara Atkinson closed the set 16-14, on a thumping kill down the middle of the court. Atkinson also had her a day with 15 kills tying her career high. After a weekend performance where she'd have 61 digs, where uh, libero Megan Harris was named the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week. Harris also set a career high 32 digs on Friday, the most by any Sun Belt player in an opening week of conference play. Next up, the Golden Eagles will turn to the Wellness Center versus Troy this weekend. Now, turning over to your 4th Street Player of the Week, the fans have spoken. Voting senior defensive back Natron Brooks. Brooks would have three tackles in a huge field goal block in the fourth quarter that would lead to a score for the Golden Eagles. And now, your play of the week. Speaking of defensive backs, Brooks teammate Eric Scott Jr. would capture the 4th Street Play of the Week Scott Jr. would take one to the apartments on a read on two lanes, Michael Pratt. The score would cap off the win for the Golden Eagles as they are now 
taking rest on the bye week. Scott also has two picks on the year in just, we in just week four. It will be interesting now to see how he fares and how many interceptions he finishes the season with. This has been SMTV Sports Recap. Back to you. Thanks, Austin. Coming up, an annual festival in Laurel is bigger and better than ever. Plus, community calendar anchor Maya Evans sits down with Generation Action co-president Phoebe Stutz. Be sure to stick around after the break. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Good? Yep. If your husband gets lung cancer from smoking, be prepared to spend a lot of time together. Eight, eight, one, seven, nine. Just not the way okay. either of you imagined. The people you love are worth quitting for. You can quit. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. Cause everything I touch turns Hubcityhoedown.com to find your tour dates and live music events for all your favorite local bands. Or submit your own local event on our website. That's hubcityhoedown.com. Your live music in the Berg. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Laurel's Loblolly Festival is making a return this October, and with such a renowned history, we're looking at how impactful this festival is and how it got started. I spent some time in downtown Laurel to see what's happening leading up to Saturday, and it really is something to behold. With the Loblolly Festival returning to downtown Laurel the first Saturday of October, let's take a look back at the rich history that follows this beloved and iconic festival. The festival is named for the Loblolly Pine Tree, a staple of Laurel's history. Starting in 2008, the festival quickly grew in popularity and spread over the streets of downtown Laurel and has quickly become a key part of Laurel culture. Loblolly Me just represents the whole history and culture of Laurel. The festival was once known as the Main Street Festival, but was changed to the Loblolly Festival to honor the Loblolly pine wood that helped stabilize Laurel's economy. The festival features vendors, arts and crafts, fun games and rides for the kids, good food, and the famous chainsaw wood carving event. The festival even features an appearance from Mr. Loblolly, a Paul Bunyan-esque character that is the mascot of the festival. Loblolly has even been featured on HGTV's popular Laurel-based series, Hometown. The event also showcases small businesses in the community and surrounding areas, helping the owners out greatly. Wild Valley Festival is a big deal for all of the businesses in downtown Laurel because it draws thousands of people to the downtown. So whether you're a restaurant or um, a shop, you're guaranteed a lot of foot traffic that day. The 2022 Loblolly Festival takes place on October 1st from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The event is always held on the first Saturday of October, rain or shine. Bring your family to downtown Laurel for a day of fun in the infamous City Beautiful. Abigail Troth, SM2 News. I am Maya Evans. Welcome to the community calendar. SMAC presents Laser Tag. They are hosting the event inside the Trent Lock National Center in rooms 103A through D. It will be held on Friday, September 30th from 5 to 9 p.m. 
AASO is having a panel discussion on being black at a predominantly white institution. It will be held in the Union Room G on September 29th from 5 to 7 p.m. The Student Alumni Association is hosting a President Search listening session with Joe Paul. It will be in the Thad Cothran Center in the Joe Paul Theater. The times are 10 to 11.30 a.m. and 1 to 2.30 p.m. USM Student Government Association is having applications for Varsity. The program is under the Cabinet Branch of SGA. For more information, go to Southern Miss SGA on Instagram and click on the link in their Instagram bio. Southern Wind Company is hosting karaoke night on Thursday, September 29th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Before we close out the show, let's see a snippet of the interview with Phoebe Studs, USM Generation Action Co-President. Phoebe, what is exactly Generation So Generation Action is a student organization and an affiliate of Planned Parenthood. So we mostly desire to mobilize advocacy among students and younger generations, hence the name. Um, and we also want to educate people on reproductive rights and freedoms and educate people on sexual health and local and state and nationwide resources. So we pretty much do a little bit of everything that Planned Parenthood does. What kind of events does your organization do? I always like to say that we do a little bit of everything. Um, we do anything from tablings weekly to uh, crowd canvassings to hosting sex ed seminars where we have leaders or um, public figures come in and talk about certain topics. We really like to keep it switched up and um, keep things exciting and new because we're always trying to uh, foster new membership. Mm -hmm. So that's really important to us. Do you think your organization fosters student involvement? Oh, for sure. I, I think that this organization encourages students who um, would maybe not necessarily speak out and use their voice. I feel that this organization creates a safe space for queer students, people of color, people of different sexual orientations and origins. Um, I think that that really, really encourages involvement among students because they feel like they have a place to do so and they have a community of people that they can relate to and connect with. And we also always, always encourage people to come and help us at events, um, even if they're just active members. We do have a board of officers, but we love to have members come out and show their faces too. So as an organization, you all gather a plan to write a letter to Joe Paul. Can mm -hmm. you tell us more about that? So I'm sure that everyone is aware of the group of protesters that come on campus. They come on every Tuesday or Thursday. They like to switch it up. Um, but they, they really spew a lot of homophobic, transphobic, racist, Islamophobic propaganda. Um, and that's something that we feel like really goes beyond what their First Amendment rights allow them as a group that comes on campus to publicly protest. Uh, we feel that their First Amendment rights become questionable when students feel threatened and unsafe on campus. And, you know, this is the place where students are, are at every single day. They have to walk by these people and hear the things that they're saying. They're being called slurs. They're being told that they're going to certain places because of their life choices or things that are out of their control. And uh, we want to do something about it. We want to express our concerns over this because we, we think that this has gone on for far too long. They've been here for years. Um, we can date it back to before 2017, but there are um, there is documented information about these people and some of the things that they've said, some of the dates that they've been here. Um, so we are organizing a letter writing campaign to Joe Paul, uh, who's the USM president. He's an interim president, so we feel that um, our efforts would be especially monumental because he's kind of a transitional figure for us. He's not going to be here um, for a whole, like for a long time. So we think that this would be especially um, influential. So we want to write these letters to him and just express our concerns, our personal experiences, let students talk about how this has affected them. And we want to raise up the people 
who um, are from minority groups and stuff on campus who don't feel like they can talk about these things, who feel like they just have to shut their mouth and go along with it and just let it happen. But we want to keep it from happening. That was a great segment, Maya. Thanks, Abigail. I really appreciate that. Well, is everyone ready for midterms? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know it was coming up. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. I've lost track of time. Of course, midterms are kind of one of those things where it's like, it just sneaks up on yeah, you. Yeah, it caught like, me off guard. Like, like, what are all these quizzes and tests? It's just yeah. absurd. Yeah. But midterms mean we're almost done with the semester. So, oh, no. thank God. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Look at the bright Just side. a little break, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's We're like so midterms. Good. A month and a half later, you got your, got your break. So, right. So, that's the good part about it. But without further ado, I think that'll wrap it up. Oh, how sad. Anyway, <laughs> just don't fail the SMTV midterm. Y'all are Garrett. We'll get you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for tuning in to watch SMTV this week. If you want to be, if you want to stay in the loop for all things SMTV, be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube. The rest of that interview with Phoebe Stutz will also be on our channel. You you will be sure to find a new episode of the show every Wednesday evening. I'm Maya Evans. I'm Abigail Troth. I'm Jeterica Wilson. And I'm Austin Lindsay. As always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. TV news episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. Listen to Southern Miss today, Monday through Thursday on WUSM. Get all of your local, regional, and national news, weather, sports, and more on Southern Miss today. News you if can If you would use. like to advertise with Southern Miss Student Media, give us a call today at 601-266-4258 or reach out to Justin Martin at wilbur.martin at usm.edu.